All right, so in 11.9, we are now kind of changing wheels a little bit and uh, going into what's called a normal distribution, okay? A normal distribution follows a few um, set criteria. First off, number one, the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same number, okay? In a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are all the same number. A normal curve is bell-shaped. It's symmetrical on the left and the right. The area under the curve is one, which means that every single data point fits inside the curve. The normal curve approaches but never reaches the x-axis as it gets further away from the center. And then all normal distributions obey the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. All right, so there's the list of things that happen, but what the heck is a normal curve? All right, so let's take a look here off to the side. Let me just show you real quick. If I went through and wanted to start graphing data, okay? Let's say we all go out to the uh, track right now, and we're all going to do 100-yard uh, dashes, okay? We're going to time each other on 100-yard dashes. So out of the classroom, we're going to have some average speed, right? We can find an average. That's what we've been doing. Okay. Well, in a normal distribution, if I start counting people saying, all right, so um, a couple of us ran at the average, uh, somebody else ran at the average, um, let's say, oops, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations away from the mean. Remember that number 18 in the homework we talked about, how I'm getting those values. I don't know numbers yet. That's why there's no numbers up there. Okay, but there's going to be some people that are slower than that. There's going to be some people that are faster than that. There's going to be a lot of people right around that mean area, the average area. And we're going to have some people that are really fast. We're going to have some people that are really slow. And the more and more that we do this, okay, we only have so many people in class, but let's say we started doing this with the whole school. Okay, the more and more we do this, remember each little X here is kind of a person. It's going to more and more fit this curve. It's going to look more and more like this bell curve shape where most of the people are going to fit in that middle area of your data. Most people are going to be able to run so fast. Okay? There are going to be some of us out there that are speedsters. You guys are down there. There's going to be some of us out there that are slow pokes. We're down there. Okay? But that's kind of how a normal curve works, where if something has a normal distribution, that means that the vast majority of your data is there in the middle. That's why there's a, that hump in the middle of a normal curve, because that's counting the data, okay? There's the peak. The maximum value is your average, because the maximum number of people hit that average. That's what we're saying about a normal curve. The mean, the median, and the mode are all the same number. It's all right in the middle of the curve. So if we look here, this is then how that would break down. Okay? Your average, your mean, is right in the middle of the graph. Okay? Then 50%, because remember, the, the median is the same number as the mean. And so therefore, half of your data is to the right of your graph. Half of your data is then to the left of your graph. Okay? And it's symmetrical. The mode is also that median, so that means most of your data, most of the people, if you're counting people running a 100-yard dash, most of them run at that average speed. Okay? And so then the big part, it's symmetrical. It's symmet you can see that with the numbers up here, that it's symmetrical on the graph. And we said that it follows that 68, 95, 99.5 rule. Well, what that means is that one standard deviation away from the mean, which is here, there's one standard deviation below the mean, here's one standard deviation above the mean. There is 68% of your data there. That's within one standard deviation of the mean. Well, that 95%, that comes from this. Going from here to there, this 
is 95% of your data falls within two standard deviations of the mean, of the average. And then 99.7% of your data is then going to fall within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay? So 99.7%, that leaves us 0.3%, right, outside what we have here. So that means this itty bitty little tail here is 0.15%. And this itty bitty little tail here is 0.15%. Because it's symmetrical. We can't have just 0.3 on either side. It's 0.3 cut in half. Half on the right, half on the left. And so if you take your calculator and you add up all these percentages, we should get 100%. Because 100% of our data falls on the graph somewhere. Okay? That's what we're saying here. All right. This type of statistic, this type of graph, what we're using this for, is allowing us to say stuff about a general population, an, an infinite population. Okay? If we say that something follows a normal curve, Okay, what that means then is that, like I said, we could go out and we could all run the 100-yard dash, and we could put ourselves on this graph. And then we could go, okay, well, how about everybody that's in a math class right now and add that data? And then, okay, how about everybody that's in um, this side of the building right now? Or how about everybody that's in the second story right now? And as we keep adding people to our graph, we're going to get closer and closer to having this bell-shaped curve. Okay, we don't have, we're not saying here that we have a finite number of people. That's why this right here doesn't actually touch that axis. Okay, that's part of it that it says in one of our, uh, what do we have? We had five things there. One of them said that it never actually touches the x-axis. It gets closer to it, but never touches it. That is called asymptotic. Kind of a cool, cool word. Asymptotic. Asymptotic means that it gets closer, but never touches that line. Okay, there's always the possibility of having somebody that is just super fast. There's always the possibility of having somebody who is just super slow. And as we continue to get more and more people in the population that we're sampling, we're going to see that. There's always going to be somebody who's clear down here. There's always going to be somebody that's clear up there faster than everybody else. Okay, so this ends up being an, think of it as like an infinite population as opposed to only sampling 10 people or 20 people. Okay? Questions on what a normal curve is? How it's broken up? No? Let's kind of use, um, let's set up a example here. Oh, one more thing I want to show you quick. We're not going to do this much in the class, but I wanted to put this out there so that you guys understand because if somebody asks you, hey, here's a curve, is this curve uh, positively or negatively skewed? Okay, positively or negatively skewed. Well, you know that this is then the normal distribution that we just talked about. That's that nice bell-shaped curve. This is considered positively skewed. This is considered negatively skewed. The trick to knowing which is which is look at the tail. Whatever has the longer tail on it, that's the direction it's skewed. So this has a longer tail to the positive side of a number line, so that's positively skewed. This has a longer tail on the negative side, so that's negatively skewed. Okay? In this class, we're going to only deal with a standard normal distribution. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at our first example here. We just want to sketch a normal curve. In fact, I already give you the normal curve. You just need to put in data for it. Okay? So, uh, zoology. Uh, for a population of male European eels, the mean body length and one positive and one negative standard deviation is shown below. Sketch the normal curve showing the eel lengths at one, two, and three standard deviations from the mean. So, first off, the mean body length. Remember, mean means average. So our average body length is 15.7 inches. 
So if we look over here to our picture I gave you of a normal curve, where do I put that 15.7? Where do I put that average? Right in the middle. So right here in the middle, I say 15.7. That is our X bar. That's our average. All right, well, then they give us one standard deviation above that. So one standard deviation above that is 18.5. So above that then means to the right. 18.5 is one standard deviation away. Notice that's that one tick mark. The tick marks are showing standard deviations away from the mean. So one standard deviation away is 18.5. One standard deviation to the left is 12.9. Okay, well, that's great, but to fill in the rest of this graph, we need to know what the heck the standard deviation is. How do you suppose we're going to find that? We don't want to add anything together. All we want to do is we want to find out what's the difference here. Then is it the same as the difference here? It should be. All you're doing is taking the big number minus the next small number. That should give you that standard deviation. Big number minus the next small number. That should give you the same standard deviation, which is, say it again, 2.8. So our standard deviation here is 2.8. Okay. So... Let's go through then and fill out our chart. So if 18.5 is one standard deviation away, how do I find two standard deviations away? Anyone? I add another 2.8. So take 18.5 plus 2.8 in your calculator. What do we get? 21.3. So 21.3. Well, now we've got to add another 2.8. What do we get? 24.1. All right, we need to go the other direction. We need to go the other direction. So 12.9 minus 2.8. 10.1 minus 2.8. All right, so what does this mean for us now? This means that 34% of all European male eels have a length between 15.7 and 18.5 inches. That, again, 34% of all male European eels have a length of 12.9 to 15.7 inches. So therefore, 68% of all European eels are between 12.9 and 18.5 inches long. That's what our data is now telling us. Okay? What's the next percentage out? So 13.5 on either side. 13.5%. Okay, so we know 13.5% of our uh, population, the world population is between 18.5 and 21.3 inches long. 13.5% is between 10.1 and 12.9 inches long. Okay. And then we have our last one, which is 2.35. So 2.35% of the population is between 21.3 and 24.1 inches long. Okay, and so on and so forth. Now, if you add all of those up, that does not give you 100%, because what don't I have marked on here? That, that, but it's not a 0.3 in one spot, right? It's 0.15 on to the two ends. The very tails, the very outside tails, I don't have marked on here, okay? Which is fine if you don't mark it, but that's where we would get the, in the full 100% uh, for our data. All right, so then, of course, using this, we would be able to find different information out. We, I would be able to say, hey, guys, um, how, uh, what percentage of the population, male population of these eels, would you expect to be between 10.1 and 
and 18.5 inches long. What percent of the population would you expect to be between 10.1 and 18.5 inches long? What is it? 81.5 percent. How'd you find that? You just added those percentages up. Yeah. You would expect 81.5 percent of the population to be between 10.1 and 18.5 inches long. Okay? That's all we're doing with this. Questions? Okay, let's try another example. We are again analyzing data, and we have, they say the heights of adult American males are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 69.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. So, we want to go through first and draw our normal curve. So, where do I put that 69.5 on my curve? Right in the middle. That's where the mean goes. So 69.5, that is our X bar. Okay, well, we have a standard deviation of 2.5. So how do I get how tall men are that are one standard deviation above the mean? I take 69.5 plus 2.5. What do I get? Okay, well, how do I get the next standard deviation away? Add 2.5, yeah, this, just keep on going. How do I get three standard deviations away? Add another 2.5, so I get 77, right? Okay, well, now I gotta go below, so I gotta take my mean and subtract my standard deviation. So 69.5 minus 2.5. I got to go two standard deviations to the left. So 67 minus 2.5. And then again, three standard deviations away. So 64.5 minus 2.5. 62. All right, so there we have our normal curve drawn out with all of our values given. Our mean is given, one, two, and three standard deviations to the right and the left are provided for us now. So going back to the question here, question A says, what percent of adult American males are between 67 and 74.5 inches tall? So to find that out, we gotta go back to our graph. And we're saying, all right, well, 67 is sitting right there. And 74.5 is sitting right there. We want to find out what percentage of American males fall in that range. Well, how are we going to find that out? What do you think? Add up what? 34%. Right. Don't forget to go back to this chart right there. It tells you all your percentages. Okay. If information ha follows a normal curve, then it's always going to follow those percentages. And so if we come back here, 67 is one standard deviation away from the mean, so that's 34% of our data between those two bars. 72 is one standard deviation away, so that's, again, another 34% between those two bars. And then 72 and 74.5, uh, 74.5 74 is two standard deviations away, and so that gives us 13.5% of our data sitting there. And so to find out what percentage of American males are between 67 and 74.5 inches tall, we add up those percentages. And that gives us what? 81.5%. Okay. Now, the last question is slightly different. Okay. It says, in a group of 2,000 adult American males, about how many would you expect to be taller than 6 feet? Well, 6 feet is 72 inches. So first, we need to find the percentage 
that we would expect to be taller than six feet. So again, looking back at our data, 72 inches is right here. So what percent of our data is taller than 72 inches? How did you find 16? Okay, you can go through and say, well, we take 13.5, because that's this area here, and uh, 2.35, which is that area there, and then say, okay, well, that little bitty little tail is going to be 0.15%. You can add all those up. Or, or you could say to yourself, well, I know that from here over is 50% of my data. Right? I know that from the mean going to the right, that's 50% of my data. But I don't want this part. So I would take 50 minus 34, and again, that gives me 16%. Okay, so there are two ways of looking at it. Both of them are correct. So 16% of American males are going to be taller than 6 feet. But what does that mean for us if we're taking a sample of 2,000 adults? How many of them would we expect to be taller than six feet? How are we going to find that? Little secret to math. The word of means multiply. You guys translated uh, math to English and English to math back in Algebra 1. Of means multiply. So if I say, hey, what is 16% of... 2,000, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply. I'm going to take 16% times 2,000. But do I actually type in 16 in my calculator? No, I've got to change it to a decimal. I've got to take 0 0.16 times 2,000. 320 out of our 2,000 should be taller than six foot.